Hello friends, it's Susie Prez here, founder of VinMaps. And in case you're not familiar with us, we create beautiful wine region maps for your home or professional wine space. And you can peruse our beautiful collection online at vinmaps.com 24 seven. So this is our episode four of our sparkling wine series. And the last one was dedicated to, dedicated to Prosecco from Italy. And tonight we're gonna be featuring um, the Cremant sparkling wines from France, and in particular those from Alsace, so Cremant d'Alsace. And as well, uh, we'll be tasting, of course, this beautiful Brut Envy from one of the top producing uh, Cremant houses and wine houses in that area in Alsace, Lucien Albrecht. So briefly, we'll be going through a little bit about the geography, the vineyards, the wine, a little bit about Cremant, and a little bit about Lucien Albrecht, and we'll be tasting this wine. So stick around. So the Alsace region, it's in the northeast of France. Germany is to the east, borders on the east, and Switzerland borders on the south. And it's about 300 miles east of Paris, depending on where you're at um, in the region. And as part of the Grand Est, uh, Grand East, Great East um, geopolitical region as of 2016, which also includes Champagne, Ardan, and Lorraine. So this is about a 72 mile um, in length, uh, north to south area, and a few miles wide. So it's really not that large of an area, but it's packed full of historical and cultural interest, as you might imagine. It's been a uh, geopolitical, strategic geopolitical gateway for um, centuries. And it's belonged to Germany and France at different times. And um, so you're gonna find just a lot of cultural art, uh, culinary, wine, um, everything is <laughs> very interesting in architecture. So for instance, in Strasbourg, in the north, which is the capital of the Grand Est uh, region. It's a modern city, of course, um, but it has interwoven throughout. Uh, you'll find cobblestone streets. You'll find uh, the beautiful canal. Oh, the main river in Alsace is the Eel. And um, the Rhine, by the way, is about 12 miles to the east, depending where you're at um, along the north-south continuum in Alsace. And the, uh, in certain spots, the canals are lined with flowers and you'll see the um, half timbered um, architectural style there as well. So centuries old architecture, um, just a charming place. And in Strasbourg in, in particular, they have, I think, um, at least 13 museums. And so it's just a fascinating place to visit all on its own, and of course the wine is there too. Um, further south in the Haute Rhine, you'll find a town called Colmar, and this one is actually straight out of a fairy tale, supposedly. I've not been there and I'd love to go, but um, you'll find the white timbered, half timbered um, architecture, charming cottages. Uh, in the Petite Venice area in particular, you'll find uh, immaculate, road buildings that are in pastels of pink, yellow, sky blue. And it's um, actually interesting, I found in my research that um, Disney, of all <laughs> things, chose Colmar um, as its inspiration site for the movie Beauty and the Beast. So this gives you a sense of the true romantic, beautiful um, town that it is. And then imagine sun dappled vineyards in the distance. Another interesting fact about Colmar is that it's the birthplace of the famous sculptor and artist, artisan, uh, Frederic Auguste Bertoldi, who was responsible for designing and creating the Statue of Liberty. Uh, Colmar is also the um, last known town to be liber liberated during World War II. Uh, now let's get into a little bit more about the vineyards here. The vineyards run north-south along the eastern flank of the Vosges Mountains 
and uh, with that there's an orographic effect that happens and so this actually is a protecting factor and even though uh, Alsace is at 48.3 degrees latitude north thereabouts um, it doesn't receive as much rainfall and is warmer than its neighbor to the uh, west Champagne at 48.9 degrees latitude north so very close latitudes but very different climates and microclimates that are occurring in these places and so this is perfect for the grapes and they, they love the, the long growing season. And uh, you have less rain, warmer temperatures during the growing season. And uh, most of the vineyards are grown in the Old Rhine or the southern part of Alsace. In terms of Lucien Albrecht, the source uh, vineyards are just south of Colmar in a town called Uschwar which is flanked by two very famous hills, the Finksberg and the Bolenberg hills. And the Finksberg in particular is a Grand Cru, Grand Cru site. That's since I found in my research, uh, 12, the year 1299, for whatever reason, 1299 was uh, the year <laughs> that that all was uh, notated. So what about the wines here? So Alsace is quite interesting in that it's one of the rare um, places in the world where the wine production is very dedicated to white wines, white wines. 90% um, of the wines produced here are white wines and the focus here is on dry aromatic pure fruit flavors. Um, the best wines are concentrated with a mark of acidity such as Gewürztraminer, Riesling, uh, Pinot Gris and Muska. So again, the uh, winemaker's focus in Alsace is really all about the grape and the terroir, where the grapes are from. And there's therefore a low use of new oak. And as well, interesting fact, the type of grape is listed on the wine bottle, not in the case of this Cremant, but um, other still wines. Uh, such as Riesling will be on the label instead of the region from where it's uh, where it's from uh, like the rest of France um, that's how they label the wines. So Cremant, what are we talking about when we're talking about a Cremant? Well it's a sparkling wine obviously um, I mentioned it but it's made in the same painstaking complex manner as Champagne so method Japanoise uh, the tr traditional method so um, Secondary fermentation is in the bottle and all the other intricacies of making sparkling wine um, the Champagne way are um, hold true for these Cremants, these Cremant wines. Another interesting thing is that the uh, Cremant wines in Alsace make up a quarter of all the Alsace wines produced and then in France these are uh, half, representing half of all of the Cremant from France. So Alsace is a big deal <laughs> in terms of Cremant. Grapes that they're allowed to use for making Cremant d'Alsace are Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, uh, Riesling, Chardonnay, Auxerrois, and Pinot Noir. And also the grapes that go into these wines must be 100% hand harvested and um, they must have a minimum of 12 months aging with nine months of those being on the lees. And then turning to Lucien Albrecht, let's get into this wine. Some Psalms open these things in five seconds. <laughs> Ah, beautiful. Worth the wait and my reward <laughs> for all my hard work putting this video together, right? <laughs> so Lucien Albrecht has a long history of viticulture and winemaking in Alsace. In 1425, Romanus Albrecht moved the family to Tan uh, near the Swiss border. And then fast forwarding, oh, 
Fast forwarding over two centuries later, in 1698, Balthazar Albrecht moved the family to Orschwar and the modern winemaking tradition began there. So um, this Brut Envy today that we're tasting is primarily made from Pinot Blanc and others such as Chardonnay and Pinot Auxerrois. <laughs> uh, they also produce a lovely rosé cremant which would, which would be made completely uh, with Pinot Noir grapes. That's one of the things that is controlled. And they also create beautiful still wines as well. And you can go to their website, Lucien Albrecht website, and see all those. They make uh, beautiful Grand Cru reserves, um, harvest wines, uh, and so forth. So let's let's try this beauty. I'm a bit parched. <laughs> beautiful gold color. It's gorgeous. Hmm. Lovely. Hmm. It goes down quite easy. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to mix this with anything, actually. It's just so beautiful on its own. Um, beautiful gold color in bubbles. I'm getting very light very light notes of a little bit of pear, uh, zest of lime, a tiny bit of a, a tad bit of brioche, hmm. almost you can almost taste the countryside with this there's almost an herbal note to it this is lovely and this my friends was about $20 versus what you could pay for a champagne and I'm no, no, no nothing against the champagne they're lovely wines but uh, when you just want something that's easy to purchase and easy on the wallet uh, these beautiful Cremant wines are a nice alternative. Uh, this we did get on wine.com. Our local merchant didn't have it, but we got it really quickly. And that uh, that was not a plug for wine.com. We're not sponsored to say that. Um, we just happened to purchase it from them. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode, this episode four on sparkling wine, uh, featuring the beautiful Cremant d'Alsace wines. And I hope you'll subscribe to our channel. Please subscribe. And next we'll be talking about, next time we'll be talking about the beautiful Zecht sparkling wines from Germany. Stay tuned for that. And um, thanks again for joining me today. Happy New Year. Take good care. And uh, here's to your health. A la vôtre.